So here are some questions for you. Does having faith in Christ mean that you leave the thinking cap at the door? Does believing in Jesus mean you can't think things through? That reason and Christian faith have nothing to do with each other? And, as importantly, does all my emphasis on God's love, His love for us and our love for Him, mean that that is what I'm trying to convey, that that is what I agree with? You know, that all we have to do is sing kumbaya and everything will be okay? Is that what I'm saying? Not so much. Actually, I do find that in the Bible, that to be authentically loving means to be authentically thinking. Yeah, my name's Charles. Grab yourself some coffee and let's talk about it. Now, what I find interesting is those who ask these type of questions and assume that Christian faith means that you give up reasoning and that any emphasis on love of God is to stop thinking is that they have an incomplete idea about what love truly is. And so perhaps that's where this conversation needs to start. What is involved in love? Now, if this isn't the first time you've watched one of my videos, you know that I tend to talk about the two greatest commands. Or if not directly talk about them, I do refer to them and do that quite often. Now, these two commands, well, the first is to love God with our entire being. And the second one is to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Now, in the book of Matthew, Jesus tells us what this includes in terms of loving him. It means loving him with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind. And then in Mark, he adds with all of our strength, which has led me to saying with our entire being. And I say that because we are to love fully with our heart, which is our emotions, with our soul, which is the essence of who we are, the primary essence of our being, with our mind, you know, our thoughts, our reasoning, our intellect, our ability to put two and two and three together, and with what we do, our strength. See, it involves every aspect of human existence, so every aspect of our being, our whole entire being. So, a, a, a good working definition for love is that to love is to feel, it is to be, it is to think, and it is to do. See, to love as fully as God desires us to love and as much as he created us to love requires us to think things through. We got to know facts, we got to know things, we got to have answers to questions asked, okay? but we are to think. And we're told over and over again in the New Testament by those who wrote it, that they were writing things in order that we may know things. See, they were telling us to think. They were telling us to reason. They were telling us to read, put two and two together. Okay, engage your mind. We're even told that we're to test the spirits, you know, to compare, to analyze what is truthful, what isn't. That requires thought on our part. This is one of the reasons that good apologetics and theology are so necessary to learn and to listen to and to keep coming back to, to help us stay engaged with our minds. Now, with all this uh, emphasis, though, on the need for learning and the need to knowing, there is something very important to remember, okay? The mind is just one of four things with which we are to love with. It is not the only thing. So we don't want to focus so much on knowledge, on learning things, or learning how to apply these things to our daily life that we develop tunnel vision and forget the big picture. See, whenever you focus too intently on one thing, well, the old adage is, you know, you, you, you can't see the forest for the trees anymore. So you get so focused on the one tree, you forget the great big panorama and glorious nature of the forest around you. See, it is as knowledge retains its place, you know, as a component part of how, of everything we need to love, that it can then lead to a richer life through the wisdom it provides. And wisdom is the skill at living well. 
See, it needs to remain harnessed in love, or it quickly becomes rather self-seeking. See, it, it, it develops a sense of self-importance for all that it knows. See, knowledge in and of itself, by itself, is very cold. There is no life in mere facts as important as those facts are. And by the way, I, a side note here, a, a little digression. I do find it interesting that in these exact same passages where Jesus is saying that thinking is part of loving, he is also saying that emotions are a part of loving. They're a component part that is involved in loving. They're not love itself. They are one-fourth of the entire person, one-fourth of what it takes to truly love. Isn't that fascinating? But like I said, I was digressing. So, there you go. There you have it, and there it is. You now know why love involves being a thinking individual. See, love is found in the balance of four component parts. The heart, which is the emotions, the soul, the essence of who we are, our mind, the intellect, the reason, how profound, and our strength, what we do. So love is more than any one of these things separately. It is more than our emotions. It is more than our self. It is more than our reasoning, than our thoughts. And it is more than what we can do. It is God's gift to us, and through us, it is His gift to others. So until next time, love simply, love wisely, and love well. And learn, think, and keep that in balance with everything else. But that is the secret of living out that French press style of faith. A faith that is very much like a very good cup of coffee that a French press gives. It is simple, strong, full of flavor, and richly satisfying. It is one in which the abundance of life that Jesus came to give can actually be found. Well, tell me what you think in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend. For good coffee and good conversation, loves good company. And click the like and then the subscribe button and make sure to click on that gray notification bell and tell YouTube you want to be notified each time a new conversation is posted. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will catch you next time.